Out. Hey, welcome to AF Live number three. Looks like we got everything together this time. Just running a little bit late. There was a, a nice little traffic jam on the way here today, and it, uh, it jammed me up for some time. But today we're going to talk about trocar hooks. You know, they're the sharpest. If you don't know about trocars, they are the sharpest hooks in the world. They're surgically sharpened, just like a hypodermic needle. They are the sharpest hooks that I've ever put through my fingers, and you really can't even tell they're through your finger until you jerk back and that barb gets you. I mean, you can, you can barely feel it, but they are very, very sharp. Um, there's a couple of, uh, couple of clips we're going to show you tonight, basically where we introduce some guides out there to some, to some circle hooks that are trocar sharpened. And let me see if I can get a... This is a swim bait hook, and I'm going to hold this up as close as I can. And if you see, it's got a different kind of a point on it, different than what's normally sharpened on your traditional hooks out there. And like I say, it's sharpened just like a hypodermic needle and uh, sharpest hooks I've ever used. Um, they come in jig heads, they come in circle hooks, all different sizes. What we're going to show you tonight is some clips uh, using circle hooks and how it catches that fish every time pretty much right in the corner of the mouth. And uh, just a little story about a circle hook. We were fishing a couple years ago with Captain Tommy Z Zeisman. Captain Tommy Z, if y'all know him from Tampa, uh, he's down in the Keys now. But uh, his first introduction to a circle hook that was sharpened trocar style was a pretty thick wire size. And he, he was telling me, dude, ain't no way this is ever going to penetrate a tarpon's head. And uh, the first one came in, it was in the corner of the mouth. Second one came in, it was through the bone in the top of the head and through the top of the lip. And he was pretty much sold after that. And he's pretty much fishing trocars now when he can, when he can get his hands on them. I know that. Um, take a couple questions or, yeah, let's take a couple questions right now. Anybody got anything out there? See, there's, uh, how many people are on there right now? 46 people out there. What's happening, folks? Always... I've always wanted to snook on my line. X-Man, me too. Come to Muggin Mania next year. You'll get some snook. Let's see. How big do you think my Barracuda and my profile picture is? Can't see your profile picture right now. Um, trocar story with... Let me tell you a little trocar story, basically. Um, no, I'm going to roll it. Oh, here goes the trocar story. The world has never seen a hook like this. It starts with ultra clean, cold forged, high carbon steel with increased carbon content and reduced impurities for higher tensile strength. Then it's enhanced with a bolstered wire diameter for a stouter hook to withstand aggressive hook sets and intense fights. And for the first time ever on a fish hook, we utilized a black chrome auto catalytic plating process for a stronger finish to resist wear and corrosion. But then came the real innovation. To make it the most effective hook ever designed, we collaborated with people whose job it is to make things very, very sharp and very reliable. A company that makes surgical needles, unbelievably sharp needles that surgeons use. This collaboration has yielded the first surgically sharpened fish hook. A radically new design with a three-sided point, sharpened by a computerized high-speed grinder. It is easily the world's sharpest hook designed with a special low profile barb to penetrate even faster and hold fish tight. In test after test, we have proven that anyone can set this new hook with half the effort of any other hook, which means you'll turn more bites into hookups and put more fish. What's happening guys? I guess you could actually see right there how that hook is sharpened with that animation. That what's happening when I'm you know, 45 minutes late from traffic. I didn't know that animation was going to be on there. But, uh, yeah, that uh, is, is one awesome sharpened hook. Uh, up first, we're going to have a little clip from a show we did up in Homa Sassa catching shallow water grouper using the trocar hooks. And uh, it's a short clip, so check this out. Then we're going to have some questions after that. Um, saw one quick one there while, while we were on that little animation. What's my uh, favorite for striper? Um, if you ever use one of these airheads, one of the trocar swim bait hooks, Awesome bait, or awesome hook. Here's Chris Wilkins, shallow water grouper. Uh oh, here we go. There he is. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, he's in the rock, in the come rock. on out. Come on, come on. He's out. 
what I like about this short rod. You can put it on your hip real quick. Yes, there you sir. Go. That's nice. a nice one, brother. Nice fish, dude. In Rock and roll there. One more time. Nice. Look at that circle hook Look at right that. in the corner. If you take these circle hooks the way they are and you just roll it around, it'll Look pop that. right out. And I reeled, I didn't set the hook. Yes, sir. How about Amazing that? Amazing how these fish fight. If y'all ever get a chance to come do this, y'all gotta come feel how hard these gag group, I can't even talk, how hard these gag groupers pull in this shallow water. What's cool about it, you don't bring them up like what I'm used to in the Atlantic. We're fishing 120 foot for them a lot of times. You bring them up one atmosphere, they blow up like, you know, they get those Marty Feldman eyes poking out of their head and stuff. But you can see that grouper right there. You don't even need a venting tool if you're releasing them. And that one's going in for a sandwich. Now, if you, if you saw how you actually rolled that trocar hook out, and I did see a question up here, do I mo ever modify my hooks or modify my shrimp? And yes, I do. When I have very aggressive redfish or very aggressive fish that are just really inhaling my DOA shrimp, I'll take that J hook that's in there out and I will put a trocar circle hook right in the head of it and I'll work that uh, three inch DOA shrimp, four inch DOA, whatever I'm working at the time. Um, even live bait, that's the way I do it. But I will work it just just like a uh, just like a live shrimp on a on a circle hook. And the reason I do that, if they're aggressive, a lot of times uh, the redfish will suck it in so fast, and by the time you set the hook, that J hook that's in a DOA shrimp is halfway down that redfish's throat or a snook's throat, and a circle hook will pull back out most of the time and catch that fish right in the corner of the mouth. Especially if you do not try to set the hook, always reel down on that fish, keep reeling until you feel tight line and then raise your rod tip or you know, do a sweeping, uh, sweeping action with your rod tip the opposite way the fish is swimming. So. Okay, let's get a uh, couple of questions. Will you ever come to St. Lucia, West, in West Indies? <laughs> I would love to. Would absolutely love to come down there. Where's the best place to catch snook? Uh, we just did a, just did a show, um, actually did a show last year uh, catching snook in Stewart, and that's got to be one of my favorite places to go and catch snook. I know if you're outside the United States, there's some great places to go. The Everglades is a great place to go, but uh, Stewart, by far, hands down, is uh, one of my favorite places to go. What's the biggest redfish I've ever caught? Probably it was years ago when I was guiding. It was one that was probably about 60 inches, came right up to my nose. It was a giant redfish. What's that? Knots. Oh, my knots. Yeah, what knots do I use? My terminal knots when I'm using circle hooks. If I'm grouper fishing, I will snell my hook uh, a lot of times. Um, it just kind of depends on what mood I'm in, really. I don't think the hookup ratio is any better with a snelled hook as it is with a, uh, with a loop hook tied onto it or not down to, the, down to the hook itself. I really haven't found that much difference. Um, it, they all work. They all catch fish. You choke arm make treble hooks for plugs? Yes, they do. If you check out um, the mirror lures, go to Dick Sporting Goods, and if you see the Mogan series that's on the that's on the packaging, little orange sticker on there that says Mogan series, they have trocar hooks on them. And be very careful because if you check out a show I did with Billy Henderson, I hooked him not once but twice uh, when we were filming, and all it did was flip out of the trout's mouth and and catch him. The second time, the first time he kind of sh shook in his head. <laughs> if I've ever Sebastian, Sebastian Inlet from a jetty, yes, I have. And uh, the last time I fished there, I saw Haley's Comet come by. So if you t check back when Haley's Comet was here, that's the last time I fished on the jetty at Sebastian. But I have fished there a lot since then. And um, the redfish there, when they come through, they'll eat anything that's floating on top of the water. Anything. Uh, Monster Redfish, check out a show we did up in North Carolina, Plant Pamlico Sound. Um, it was called Bulls on the Noose. And uh, we were using a technique we normally use in the marsh of Louisiana in two feet of water with a popping cork. Except this time we had like six foot a liter on it. And we're catching, uh, catching giant redfish on the airhead. Giant redfish. Great show. If y'all get it ever, it's, it's neat. I actually tried that technique off in the bite in uh, Canaveral here this past week. And... Just had sharks coming up eating the, eating the, eating the cork. Can you say that again? My wife, Shannon, always wants to set the hook, even with circles. 
<laughs> All right, Shannon, not to call you out here, but uh, don't set the hook. <laughs> I'm sure you heard that before. Just reel. So I got to do is just reel. You, and if you watch a show I did last year with Jamie Glasner, um, it's such a habit of mine. I set the hook probably six times on this uh, on this little triple tail, and finally switched to a DOA shrimp and caught him. But I kept setting the hook, so even I still do it. Jaden and Ethan, what's up, man? Miss you guys. You got, that was a big trout you caught, no doubt. No doubt. Um, this past weekend at Mugging Mania, I had the opportunity to take a couple of kids and, and their mom, who had never been on a boat. Their dad came along, too. But uh, it's Ethan and Jaden. And uh, uh, let's see. Ethan caught about a six-pound trout, and Jaden caught a great big Jack Crevel. And it was the first time they ever on a boat, first fish they ever caught on a boat. And had a ball six pound trout that's bigger than most trout most people catch in their whole lifetime fishing down there um natalie please answer sorry what was that one natalie are you <laughs> uh, no <laughs> please answer i had to go look up at that one depends on what kind you're asking there uh do you have any experience green light fishing yeah i do we uh, actually Went out for fun one time, right off Louisiana, went uh, off to the uh, Mississippi Trench, went seven for ten on swords fishing the green lights. It was, it was awesome. Had a great time doing that. Um, we're going to take, uh, take another look at a little clip here. Once again, using circle hooks, we were with Captain Chris Camps. And if y'all want to watch this full show, uh, go to YouTube, check it out. It's called Camp Tarpon. I remember that. God, I love tarpon, man. They just, they look like they're chiseled out of a big giant piece of glass or a big giant piece of uh, ice. Come on, baby, roll upside down for me. I think she's got one more last gasp left in her here at least. Woo, yeah. That's a good one there, brother. Bean point. It's no secret, there was only about 44 other boats out here with us today. And a half dozen of them hooked up. Oh, she ain't ready you know, yet No, you'll all. think. Woo, what a pretty fish. Woo, yeah. We got her here next to the boat trying to control her. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think she's in total control we still got a leader right touch at least right now. Let's, we'll have to let it go. <laughs> hey Chris, I think this fish has got a couple pounds on you. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. Look, Look at, at that. the head on that, that thing. Is a monster. I'm trying to grab her here. Let's see. Wrestling ah! match coming up. Nope, not yet. Look at that hook. Perfect in the top of the head. That Blair is a Tampa Bay tarpon. That is a nice Nice bait. work. Look at that Woo! fish. Woohoo! Yeah. Nice job. Thank you, sir. I'm gonna come down there, Chris. Yep. <laughs> how, how big you think? I'd put it at 120. Favorite Bobby? Solid. Fat fish. Solid fish. Not really long, but really fat. Cool fish there, what? Now, if y'all saw, a lot of times those circles will get them right in the corner of the mouth, but if they have their lips really shut and they, the line pulls and they do get hooked, a lot of times you'll get them right in the top of the lip like that. And I think that might be the difference whether or not you snell the hook, uh, put a loop in the hook, or tie the knot directly down to the hook, whether it'll get them in the corner every time or in the top or in, in other parts of the mouth. But it always gets them on the outside of the mouth and it's real easy to roll those hooks out. Um, there was a question earlier, uh, would y'all do a bass show? And believe it or not, a couple weeks ago, I stepped onto Lake Okeechobee for the very first time and we did a bass show. Um, so y'all are gonna see, we had airheads rigged up just like this, clipped the tail, basically kind of just like that. And what we were doing were, we were pulling these exact ones right here, Arkansas shad color and a couple other colors, pulling them across the lily pads, pulling them across the grass and the bass were coming out. And banging on them. Uh, granted, we could have used a lot of them for bait that we caught, but it was a lot of fun uh, catching them. 
Uh, and there is two model of rods out there. There's a seven foot and a seven foot nine model. Uh, both are bait casters and uh, Wright McGill just came out with a couple of brand new bait casters that we're using on the show. They work real good out there on Lake Okeechobee. Um, I think it's a six three retrieve on it. I'm not a bass fisherman, but uh, I know it wor they worked well in Louisiana red fishing. Um, we'll take a couple more questions. Uh, are you going to do a show on the southern side of Sarasota Bay? Um, haven't been down that way in quite a while, but there's always a good chance we'll be down there. We haven't done the, uh, haven't done Sarasota Bay in a while. Airheads good for snook. Yes, they are. Especially that one right there when the mullet runs going on. And right now down around Stewart, the mullet runs going on great. Um, just a little tiny 16th ounce of a, of a lead weight on the, on the swimming Let's see, it's a swim bait hook is what it's called. And um, what that enables you to do is reel it right on top of the water and you can bring it across the, uh, across the potholes. Anything sitting on those potholes is going to explode on it. A lot of times what I'll do is reel it across, reel it across, and then drop them down in the pothole and then slowly start to pull them out. A lot of times I'll drop it again. And right when you drop it again is when you get the hit. Sabalo, Sabalo's bait caster is the truth. Does that mean, yes, it's good? I know a lot of guys like them out there. Where will the next episode be? Um, tell them a bit. Yeah, we can tell you a little bit. Like I just, I gave away Lake Okeechobee. Um, right now, if you check out Jamie Glasner's Facebook page, he's posting a lot of pictures of some redfish that are like, well, I'm going to put my hands out of screen, but they're giant redfish, and we just got back doing that, and... Redfish. It's always fun catching redfish, and these were all just just giant ones. It was a ball right off canal. It reminded me a lot of doing the show I did with Bill Dance, and if you check that show out, it's called Dancing with the Stars. They weren't on top of the water like that, but man, they were everywhere, absolutely everywhere. What jig head to use for the flats and the Indian River flats? Here's one right here. I like to keep them small. This is a this is a sixteenth ounce trocar jig head. Um, it depend depending on what bait I'm putting on there. A white one like this, I would put on say a um, an electric chicken just because it would highlight and make it look like a head. But if you look at them real close, they have almost doll looking eyes on them, uh, real pronounced eyeballs, and the trout and the redfish really key in on that. And here's another one. This is a three eighths ounce right here. Um, and I'll use those two basically uh, on the flats for redfish, trout, um, snook especially, you know. And, and I do like to keep it as light as I can because when I'm taking my rod tip and twitching that bait off the bottom, I'm doing it quick enough where I can feel that tail on the tip of my rod just brrr, And as soon as I feel it brrr, on the tip of that rod tip, I'll drop it back down. And right when it drops back down is usually when you're going to feel it thump. Then you come back up and set the hook. Um, little simple technique just make it make it look I always say this on my seminars uh, if you have a if you've ever had an aquarium and you've seen one of your fish in there die a lot of times it swims up to the top of the aquarium and then slowly sinks back down slowly sinks back down about the time it hits the bottom it'll swim back up that's kind of boring to work a bait that way so you just kind of yo-yo it like this and it, it attracts them if they're there and hungry they're going to eat it you're only trying to fool the brain about half that size of that jig head right there Let's see. Pensacola, do we think we'll do another Pensacola Beach episode? Uh, I do believe there's going to be one in the works for next year for some of those great big brown fish that swim up there. Um, yes, that is a big yes. Uh, Port St. Joe area, that's a possibility as well. Um, we'll be up in that area, so you never do know. How can you know when you use a circle hook or a J hook? Um, good question. <clears throat> Let's see who just who asked that one. I know the new circle hook. All oh, marine sales. Okay. Um, no circle hook or a J hook. Oh, okay. Said okay. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm just gonna answer that one. I can't read that one. Am I? It's out of focus. Um, a lot of times, if I'm dependent on use a J hook or a circle hook, if I'm snapper fishing, um, mangrove snapper. I'll try to use a J hook because it is so, they're so quick. Uh, anything that really grabs and spits, spits the bait out real quick usually determines whether or not I'm going to use a circle hook or not. Um, if the fish are being really, really finicky, like a triple tail, a lot of times we'll take and hold a shrimp in his mouth and you can watch him swim away and he's not eating it and he's just holding it in his mouth, swimming away. He's just holding it in his mouth and maybe he'll take a little bite, little bite, little bite. And then when you finally see it disappear, you know, he's still holding it in his mouth. 
you can set the hook on them. But I'd rather use a circle hook. A lot of times I'm letting fish go, and the mortality rate when you're using circle hooks is just a whole lot higher. So, um, you know, you're, you're setting them to live another day, fight another day. What was that one? I need a rig a jig head. It's right there. How do I rig a jig head? Uh, basically, let me show you here. Red These Red and white. Red and white. These big ones? Oh, jig head and an air head. Um, what's that? Five inch swim bait. Five inch swim bait. Don't have, oh, okay, that's right. This is a five inch swim bait now, guys. Uh, for some reason, that's what it has to be called. I just got told that the other day and I just forgot. But basically, in a five inch swim bait, um, you basically, any, any soft plastic, whether it's this bait, or let me even say this bait right here, it doesn't matter. What you do is you go down as far as the bend of the hook. You see, I'm going right to the bend of the hook, right there. That's where you want to basically come up and shove it, whether it's a five inch swim bait, a stick bait, and you want to shove it basically like that. I did that one a little bit short, but you get the gist of it. For the most part, you want to go right to the bend the middle of the bend of the hook. And uh, that's how you rig a jig head, a trocar jig head. Uh, up next, a lot of guys were asking for sharks last year. Uh, we're gonna show you how to do sharks with a circle hook, a little piece of wire on there. Uh, this is Tony Melton. He happened to grab the rod that got hooked on the end of the shark or the other way around. Check this out, man, he got pulled hard. What are you breathing so hard for? Because I'm not usually the one on this end of the rod. Want <laughs> to bring him on the deck? No. It's up to you. No, I ain't bringing it to the deck. <laughs> I'll just see if you wanted to. Ugh. I can't keep him on the surface. I uh, will in a second. Come on. He's only about 800 pounds. <laughs> Now, how big would you say that fish is? Oh, too big? Too big? <laughs> hey, there ain't no fish no too big. No way. That thing's nice. I don't know. I, oh, he didn't like that. I'd say at least in the 300. There he comes. Come on, baby. We're just going to let you go. <clears throat> oh, he don't like that. One more time. Let's get him up and get that hook out. He's about there we go. Roll, roll. Good job. There you go. Yeah, he's done. <sighs> Look at that big boy. Get on. Now those are actually trocar shark hooks. They're actually made for shark fishing. They're great big. They're, I call them big nasties. Um, if you want to know anything on the trocar uh, hooks, you can go to their website uh, and check them out. They're part of Eagle Claw, if you didn't know that. And Eagle Claw, they're all American made too. So that's another reason why to buy trocar hooks, Eagle Claw hooks, laser sharp hooks. Uh, I use them all and they all work great. But if you want the sharpest ones in the world, definitely the trocar has it. I saw a, uh, saw a question on there, a little tip on how to fish Mosquito Lagoon. There's a little thing out there called the Salooner Table. Since Mosquito Lagoon and Indian River, Banana River don't have that much of a tide flow to trigger a bite, uh, you want to follow the Salooner Tables. And when you find fish, a lot of times I always say, you know, if they're not eating, you know, outside of that area, if they're not eating, you can always go and find them, find them elsewhere. Uh, but when you find fish in the Indian River Lagoon system, don't leave fish to go find fish because uh, sometime during the day they're going to get hungry. Um, another question's coming up. Stump pass shows? No. Don't think I'll be in stump pass anytime soon. Sir fishing. Five-inch swim bait. Did you ever float to inside of captivity? What rod using this clip? Uh, that clip, basically, uh, that was the new, it's a prototype rod that we're, that we came up with. Hopefully it's gonna be out at ICAST this July and then be in stores before Christmas next year. Um, don't know why it's not, but hopefully it will be soon. Um, surf casting. Oh, surf casting. Will we be doing a surf casting show? We have tried several times to go up and do a surf casting show in the Northeast. Last time we went up to try to go do it, Hurricane Sandy hit 
and that kind of canceled our plans up in that area for two years. It was so destroyed up there. But uh, we'll look into it and see if we can come up with another area we can do it and, and catch some big fish. What is your favorite terrorize? My favorite terrorize has to be um, the new, it's the golden brim. I, I call it my new favorite uh, root beer, but it's a golden brim color and love just deep jigging it, you know, everywhere I go. Uh, it, it's a great lure. Uh, best lure for snook. Um, I can tell you that uh, here, that's the, um, that's the golden brim color right there. Actually, it's just got a lot more fleck in it. Uh, so it reflects a lot more even even down deep. You can see it come up when it's flashing. Uh, recommend for pier fishing. We do have some uh, smaller surf rods that are great for pier fishing. Um, check them out. You can look at them online. A lot of the Dick stores do have them. Let's see. If you only have one size hook to fish inshore, which would it be? Good question again. Oh, you had some good questions. Uh, one size, probably a three aught. Uh, just a three aught regular live bait circle hook from Trocar because um, you know, I get a lot of Trocar hooks and I don't really have to pay for them that much. But still, they're still the only hook I've ever rinsed off and put back in the package and used over and over again. Um, so yeah, that three aught Trocar hook I could use for forever and ever. And you can still put a good a good point back on them if if you do ever you know get them tip or they get rusty. I've actually put points back on them so they do sharpen. Desilu C. What size hooks are good for tuna? Actually, believe it or not, the very, very smallest, uh, smallest circle hook you can think of uh, for tuna because you use little tiny baits a lot of times. That's the only thing I've ever used is little, little tiny small hooks for tuna. The smallest little circle hooks you can, you can really think of. It's, uh, they're just really thick wire. Lure for surf fishing for tarpon. Lure surf fishing for tarpon, uh, DOA swimming mullet. Uh, you can throw it with, uh, with a surf rod, you can throw it with an eight foot rod or even one of the boat rods and jig it back and you can throw it an absolute mile. And I have, I have hooked some giant fish with this, giant fish with it. This happens to be the sinking bait buster, but if you've ever seen any of the shows I've out there using the uh, swimming mullet, uh, even for tuna, I've used a swimming mullet. But that color right there, which is the Arkansas shad color, works absolutely great for tarpon. What is the convention where you use that Goliath grouper episode? It was a, I think it was my old, old Fenor that I had that they made in West Palm Beach, handmade 200 years ago. But it's, uh, it was my personal reel. Um, we are doing a little bit of testing right now with Wright McGill. They're making a small little grouper reel that I've tried a few times now. I absolutely like it. So hopefully that one will, that one will hit out this year, uh, in ICAST as well. So do you have another one coming up? Oh, Mr. Trossett actually made a believer out of, uh, out of one of famous captain's sons down there. He's actually getting a pretty good name down in Key West himself right now. Uh, and he caught the biggest grouper of his life. And the funny thing about it was, it was a day before grouper season. <laughs> but uh, y'all check this out with Captain Chris Trossett. Um, great big grouper on a circle. Now what we did here is we're yellowtail fishing. We got a bottom bait down on that side. We had a surface bait out on this side. You get kingfish here too? Oh yeah. On my leader. Ooh. Oh yeah, oh, look at that size of that grouper. You your hand on that one? Again. Again. That's a real one. That's what I'm talking about. That is a real one. And what opens tomorrow? <laughs> black season, man. So that's a black, huh? It's a black grouper. That is a serious grouper there, brother. That's a nice one. 30 pounds. Let go. Wow. Good <laughs> job on that one, man. That is a beautiful fish. Yes, sir. That's one sweet one, and that's a, that's a lucky fish because grouper season opens tomorrow. We'll be back <laughs> for you. You gonna dump him? Let this guy go. 
you know, we were down in the Tortugas down there, and I don't think anybody could have ever said anything if that one would have happened to slip in the, never mind. That was a big grouper. That was one of the biggest grouper I've ever seen in my life. But uh, I like to eat them to just over legal size limit anyway. But those are tasty. But uh, biggest grouper. Well, let's see. We're going to get another couple questions here. Seems like you guys are absolutely loving the Q&As. Uh, tuna fish with you in Grand Isle. Please come on. It's my wish to fish with someone like you. That's all I want. Vanessa would love to come to Grand Isle. I'll be in uh, hopefully Venice before the end of the year. The big guys are hopefully coming in. going to try it with Kevin Beach. What do I recommend for grouper? I saw a rod. Uh, we have two new boat rods out there. One that's really short and one that's kind of long. Um, that's one right there. Is it? Yeah. And um, it, they're great if you love doing spinning rods. I, I'm, not that, I'm not that accurate, or should I say, I'm not that coordinated using a jigging rod, uh, conventional style. But this one right here is a spinning rod and I can, that I use for grouper. It's only seven foot six. And I can pretty much almost lift a Volkswagen off the bottom with this. I've caught grouper up to 35 pounds and 100 feet of water with that. Um, you know, 80 pound, 80 pound yellowfin tuna we've tested with this rod. Works great. AJ's work real well. I saw that question, what's a good rod for AJ's? Uh, the new boat rods are working absolutely great for, uh, for the AJ's that guys out in, out in uh, Louisiana, uh, down in Costa Rica. They're stocking their rods with them. Absolutely loving what conventional reel is that? Answered that one already. That was my Fenor on that one. No, he's uh, talking about that blue one. Oh, the blue one? What blue one? On no, he grouper. said conventional rod. On that grouper. Conventional reel. Oh, I didn't see it. Oh, that was a prototype from uh, Wright McGill. That's one, you know, how we do the prototypes and come up with the ultimate model is we get out and we kind of test them. And every once in a while, those make it on a show because some of the guys out there like to use them. And that's the only one I have, so... We're, we're trying different things. When they hit, when they hit the market, we, you know we're going to let you know that. So, um, anyhow, please blast out a test gear. I see a 25-pound molly in so I must say awesome light tackle action. Thanks, Alexander. I love using those rods out there for small mahi. The, anywhere out there, when I get up on my tower, I'll cruise around, look for dolphin out there, and pitch to them with, the, uh, with a DOA shrimp, just like I do uh, redfish in the Indian River, Banana River, all over where they swim. You get out there and you throw to dolphin, anything you see swimming, it's a lot of fun. Best bait for groupers in the north. Um, you know, you know, squid's always a good bet. If you have pinfish, you're always a good bet. Uh, DOA swimming mullet, you know, I love jigging those up and down off the bottom. I've hooked some great big grouper and caught some fairly good sized grouper on that. But I know I've hooked some giant grouper on them. And if you can, if you can shake the red snapper off of it, that's a bad thing. Or should I say, that's the worst thing is all the red snapper down there that chew your lures up. Favorite fish to eat? I don't know if hogfish would be considered a fish, but that's pretty good. But uh, my favorite fish just to go out and catch and eat has to be uh, mangrove snapper. Hands down. Just a very good fish, and it's real fun to go, fun to go catch. What do I recommend for triple tail? If I'm fishing them, I'll always throw what I call DOA's cotton shrimp at them. It's, uh, it's the shrimp that has the glow-in-the-dark back on it. Um, it's, uh, I call it a cotton shrimp on one of the shows we did with Captain Jamie Glasner out of Port Canaveral. And that is it right there. If you see, it's, it's gold on the bottom and it has glow on the top. Basically, you throw it right over top of the triple tail, especially if you're sight fishing them. Swim it right to their nose, and as soon as you get to their nose, just drop it. And it'll go under them, they'll tilt on it. If they don't slam it immediately, um, they'll jump on that one right there. I've, I very rarely have them turn that down, and I've uh, made a lot of guides believers out of them. Scott Lum actually uses these on his charters now, so he doesn't have to go buy a bunch of shrimp. Pretty funny there. <laughs> Scott Lum using DOAs. Um, Really good bait for snook is cut ladyfish. Yes, it is. Believe it or not, that's kind of a secret. It used to be a secret down in the Keys. We'll do another show with Mark Nichols. Do another show with Mark Nichols. We were actually supposed to do one last week down there in Stewart, but the weather turned and blew 30 miles an hour, so um, didn't get it done. We will, though, this year, I hope. I'm going to try to do Pompano. How does that sound? Anybody like to see a Pompano show? I've been, we've been trying to do one forever. You're welcome, Captain Tool. 
We'll see any other color run soon. Um, basically, it just came out with the other pink one. Uh, it's a new model, the 7.2. Uh, a lot more agile, a lot so small enough for a lot of the ladies out there to use. They, you know, my favorite was a 7.6, and a lot of people's were too. But uh, it seems a 7.2 is is more of the lady style rod. When's the next Cobia show? Shortly after we film it, not to be a smarty pants, but <laughs> uh, I've been we've been trying to do a Cobia show for two years now, and uh, we've been lucky and came across a couple here and there, but um, haven't 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 got a good one here in the past couple of years. There's all your pompano. Pompano, yes, 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 cool. Well, uh, hey, this would be a good place to come see what y'all want to see then. Yes, 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 cool. John Skinner. I know a Mark Skinner. Let's see, what's my favorite fish to battle? Wow. Um, if you've ever caught a trout over 12 pounds, they're very, very tough fish to fight. Um, but yellowfin tuna, hands down, I love doing it with a big spinning rod. Absolutely love doing that. Favorite fish to catch would be, would be sea trout over 12 pounds. I've said that one many, many, many times. It, it's tough to fool those fish to catch, even with live bait. Uh, what reel is good for catching Dorado? That 7,000 Sabalo size, a whole plenty of line, up to 40 pounders I've caught them on. Um, this, that, that reel rod and reel setup right there. Same one I recommend for grouper or whatnot. Works very well for, uh, for about anything offshore, really. Best sunglasses out there. I've been using Costa Del Mar's for over 20 years now. Um, and I can still see pretty good, so they've they've saved my eyeballs over the past 20. If anything out there is better, I wish someone would let me know because I don't think there is right now. What's a good rig for sailfish? You know, live ballyhoo on a circle hook. You know, number four aught circle hook, 30 or 40 pound test. I've done shows where I've done shows. I've done tournaments out there where we use 12 pound test, 20 pound leader, and a circle hook and ballyhoo, and we're catching you know 80, 90 pound sailfish. Flats fish or bass fishing, will you do a bass show? You must have just joined. We just did a show in Okeechobee. We'll be out in April, and we use both the 7-foot and the 7-9, I believe, in the show. Bait casters. Bait casters. Yep. Let's see. We got one more clip, I think. Uh, fishing with my good old buddy, Captain Jim Ross. Jim and I have known each We met each other in captain school, uh, sea school, back, uh, well, it was a while back. We won't give Jim's age away. But uh, it was a while back. But Captain Jim Ross, always love fishing with Jim. Great guy. Y'all check this out, and then we're going to close it down. Appreciate you guys tuning in tonight. But uh, we'll be right back after Jim's clip here and uh, take a couple more questions and then close her out. Is he on it? Something's on there, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Something's on it. I don't think this is a big one. That's your warm up fish. <laughs> He's big and brown, boys. <laughs> ah, yeah, there's your warm up fish right there now. There's one. <laughs> oh yeah. Heck that yeah. ain't a big one, you know. Here I got the big rod. Because we've been getting hammered. He's just a little bitty guy. There's some down there that we know oh. are much, much bigger than that one. They'll be half the size of the boat, some of them. Now, since it's a Goliath grouper, it's a protected species. You can't pull him out of the water, so all we're gonna do is unhook him with a circle hook right there and send him on back down. Heck yeah, good job, bro. If y'all go to YouTube and check out that whole show, you'll see me, I think a couple times we show a couple breakoffs where I am absolutely bowed up on a couple down there that I cannot budge, and I think I gotta caught that one there with a 7.2 at least, but uh, <laughs> wanna tell y'all what we got coming up here soon. We got Black Friday and Black Saturday, uh, which is Thanksgiving, that time around Thanksgiving, and the specials are, that are going on are going to be awesome. Same ones that went on last year, I believe. It's by Rod. Well, 
Y'all check out the specials, but don't quote me on this, but they said it was the same as last year. Buy a rod and you get a real free. We'll see what happens. Don't quote me on that one, but I believe it is. You'll be in Tampa. I'll be in Tampa at the two spots. Brandon, Citrus Park. Brandon, Citrus Park. And West Shore and Clearwater. West Shore and Clearwater. And uh, come on by and uh, get a good deal on a rod and uh, take home a reel, I'm pretty sure. Uh, January, everybody's asking about new shows. Uh, new shows are going to be coming out in April, but if you didn't catch last season, you can catch it out. Excuse me, catch it in January on the Pursuit Channel. And starting in April, it's going to be Fox Sports Sun, formerly known as Sun Sports, formerly known as Sunshine Network. That is their new name now. Um, but uh, that's where we're going to be with brand new shows starting in April. And you're going to see a bass show next year. Uh, Lake Okeechobee, and you're going to see a show from Baffin Bay in Texas. Uh, when in Texas, do as Texans do, and we got out and waited and waited and waited. Had a good time, though. Had a great time. And uh, give you guys a shout-out again in Brownsville. Thanks again for a great welcome. What were you pointing at? Take some questions. Take some questions. How do you chum a pier for sheephead offshore? Uh, my name I not heard hard, dude. Battle of okay, my name not hard to. I can't. It's so light on the screen I can't see it. I see the last one is Obama. Obama. Okay, but uh, anyway, sheephead around uh, around uh, bridges and whatnot, around piers. A lot of times uh, I'll take a lot of shrimp heads. If you can find shrimp heads, you can scrape the side of a pier. Use a shovel. Any anything. Just uh, get some of that smell in the water. You can also use. Uh, Procure out there. There's shrimp Procure. I'm sure you can pour that in the water, but uh, and just just scrape the side and get the get the barnacles going off. And a, a lot of times those uh, the sheep pad will come right to it. Ooh, ooh. <clears throat> I'm gonna be hosting a new tournament. Did one last weekend. Warrior Challenge. Thank you for a signed tournament shirt and bucket. Um, rumors are there's gonna be five next year. See if I can remember all this. But uh, rumors are there's gonna be five. They're gonna be around Florida. We don't know where they're going to be yet, but there is going to be five. But there, Florida is going to be the main concentrate because this is where I'd be from. Weekend Warrior Challenge. But they're going to be called Weekend Warrior Challenges. And, um, you know, keep your eye out on the website for them. We'll definitely be letting you know about them. Uh, but if you, if you remember the last one, there was a lot of stuff. If you came, you won something or you won a few things. It was a, it was a great tournament. Any tips on Key West fishing? I'm on my way tonight from North Carolina. The uh, best thing I could do is tell you to hope for a cold front to beat you down here because a lot of the fish haven't even showed up to Stewart yet. The sail, the big wolf pack of sailfish, we have not had a cold front to push them down. Um, I heard the big dolphin are going off down there still, so you might be able to do pretty good with dolphin. Uh, you get you get down around any of those salt lumps down there, even the, uh, the sub wreck ought to be going off pretty good down there. Personal best tarpon trout and snook. Okay, personal best tarpon had to be season two, Barry Meyer. Season one, Barry Meyer. We'll go look for a show called The Tarpon on YouTube. That's my biggest tarpon. Caught it on fly. We estimated it at like 180 pounds. Uh, my snook two years ago, Captain Greg Snyder, 48 and a half inches. And my, what was the other one? I didn't remember the other one. Redfish. It was a giant one. Uh, when we fish down here in Naples, um, like to get back down there again soon so we can head south to the, uh, to the Everglades down there. Zolfinger. Don't know Zolfinger. Uh, any tips on catching peacock bass? It all depends on where you want to go. Uh, down south, they'll hit about anything you throw in the water if you're fishing down around Miami for them. Um, small, small topwater plugs that make a lot of noise. Uh, if you fish when they're bedding, just keep pitching on their heads when they're bedding. Eventually, they get mad enough at it and grab it, and, and you got to set the hook before they swallow it. <clears throat> You're welcome, Jason. Talking about how I made him a better fisherman. I can't know how I did it, but uh, a lot of people tell me that. It's fun to hear. Uh, shout out from the Catfish Crew, Sebastian Ellet Fort. I'll use your rods. We call them the Blue Mambas. Way to go. 
The catfish cruise. <laughs> hey, Blair, got a seven foot heavy action rod. What can I catch with it? Uh, heavy action seven footer if it's the offshore model. Uh, about anything that swims except, you know, the 600, 800 pound marlin. I'd, I'd fish anything with that rod as long as you had the reel to back it up with. Oh, biggest trout. It was 14 and a half pounds. Yes, sea trout. It was a monster. Uh, 34 and a half inches long. Have I caught a bonnet fish? Bonnet head fish? Would be a uh, kind of like a, in the uh, hammerhead shark family? Yes. Yep, caught one of those on uh, Captain Melton show. Melton Drags. Melton Drags. The GTA 5 Gamer. There's your shout out, brother. Backcountry tips, patience and be quiet and don't slam hatches. <laughs> I mean, that's, those are some of the best tips I can give you. And remember exactly how it was when you, when you get a fish to eat. And what I mean by that, I say this in seminars a lot of times. You know, you'd be out there for four or five hours at a time, and it, it's not like it's on TV. You're not getting a hit every cast. Um, and you start to slow that bait down a lot of times, and you might have had four or five adult beverages, and I've done it myself. You cast the rod out, you turn around, you put it under your rod, and you say, hey, watch, well, I'm going to get a hit while I'm doing this. Area. And then you get a hit. And next thing you know is your adrenaline's all pumped up, and you don't remember what that bait was doing. You go back to working it super fast, like you were for the past four hours not getting a hit. If you can think back while you were out there casting the rod and doing your thing on the other side of the boat, that bait was not moving a bit. It was sitting there on the bottom. So a lot of times you got to move those baits so slow out there on the bottom. It's, it's, I always say a DOA shrimp is one of the most boring baits to work sometimes because you have to work it so slow. Um, but just, you know, remember how that fish eats is what I was trying to get at when, when he eats and then repeat that during, throughout the day. And a lot of times you'll find that that's how you're going to get the fish to eat throughout the day. Let's see. Can you say hi to my two boys, Dylan and Dominic? They met you in Brandon, Florida a couple months ago. How you doing, Dominic? What's up, Brandon? Dylan. Dylan. That was in Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Oh, man. It was a long night getting here with the traffic, let me tell you. A little bit of rain falls in Florida and people lose their minds. I don't know how to drive. I swear it was tough. Wrap it with a big trout on top of All right, guys, we're gonna we're gonna show you how a chokar hook works on top water plugs. Uh, this is off the Space Coast with Captain Tyler Vollmer. Oh, with Captain Tyler Vollmer. Shout out to Tyler there. He's doing a lot of offshore now. Um, he's getting to be a heck of a captain out of Canaveral. But uh, we're gonna put it out with a uh, big trout. Choke our hooks. If you ever get out, definitely try to give them a shot. They work great. They're the sharpest hooks in the world. Oh, 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 come on, baby, come on. Bottle. There he is, brother. That's a good fish a there. Fish. Oh, Stankus? Yeah. I think it's a redfish instead of a trout, though. <laughs> oh, damn. Nope, that's a trout, brother. Big trout. That would be the targeted species Look again. Look at the shoulders on him. He's putting oh, that yeah. big weight. My favorite fish to catch. Everybody always wants to know what it is. This is it right here. Big, big sea trout. Yes, sir, that's a good one, Tyler. <laughs> Hopefully not the biggest one of the day. Because we're going to show you some big Mosquito Lagoon trout. Love that top water, bro. Can we come down and get it for you, Blake? Yeah, grab me if you would. Awesome. Awesome trout right there. Woo! One well, of the things uh, Mosquito right. Lagoon is world famous for, big trout like that. Good old yellow mouth. Cool beans. Look at that mouth. Let me see if I can get this hook out real yep. easy. I'm going to let him go. Got him? Yep, got him. Good deal. 
after I show you that beautiful Mosquito Lagoon trout. Look at the belly on him. I think he's Ooh. been eating all night. <laughs> he's been eating all night and absolutely love that top dog. Beautiful fish. Way to go, Tyler. Yeah, man. Oh, that's a nice trout there, bro. Ooh, yeah, there's <laughs> bottom there, trout. <laughs> he went doink. <laughs> We well, appreciate you guys watching tonight. Uh, this was number three. Sorry I was late. It wasn't my fault. The uh, sky juice was falling. Like I said, people lost their minds out there. Um, saw some great questions out there tonight. I wish I could get to everybody, but uh, if I don't know if y'all are seeing the questions roll in or not, but I mean, they're coming in and it's tough to even follow them on the screen. That's why I kind of, kind of uh, have trouble seeing them. And I see some more good questions coming in. I could sit here all night. Um, Anyhow, you guys, don't forget about the website. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, it'll tell you when the next live episode is. Uh, we're looking at doing it possibly in December. Uh, so let's see what happens. Um, till then, go out to Dix and get you some trocar hooked mirror lures and go catch you some trout just like you saw on, the, uh, on that last clip. But uh, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys again soon. See ya.